Have you ever wondered what a true Christian is? On today's footnotes, we will look into this vital question. Hi, this is Pastor Bill. Before we get into our study, could you hit those subscription, like, and notification buttons? Thanks. Now let's dig into our question. What is a Christian? Well, in today's church, that term is being defined in many ways, isn't it? But are those definitions biblical? And if not, think about what that could mean. Does that mean there might be many who are calling themselves Christians and believe they're on their way to heaven when they're not? Individuals who may consider themselves to be Christians simply because they go to church now and then. But does church attendance equate to the same thing as being a Christian? Well, Christians do go to church, don't they? But going to church does not necessarily mean you're a Christian. I remember a pastor saying years ago, just going to church doesn't make you a Christian any more than going into a McDonald's makes you a Big Mac. So church attendance doesn't guarantee you're a Christian. Most churches have unbelievers attending. Others may think being religious and having warm thoughts about God proves they are a Christian. It's all feeling-based. Of course I'm a Christian, they would say. When I think about God, I feel all warm inside. Sometimes I'm so moved I even cry. But being moved emotionally when you think about God, does that really prove you're a Christian? Some people just get emotional over everything, don't they? Kind of a tear ducts on steroids sort of deal. Okay, but what about this? There are times when I'm in church and I get tingles. I get chills. That's proof the Holy Spirit lives in me, right? And listen, some people believe it is. So I'm good. Quit judging me. But do you really think getting chills is a proof of being saved? Listen, I'm a huge Laker fan because that's the right thing to do. And back in the 80s, during the great Showtime Laker era, when we were dominating, I was invited to watch them play against the hated Boston Celtics, our main rivals. In the first half, Boston blew us out. We went into the locker room trailing by 20 points. But in the second half, Magic Johnson led the charge, and we stormed back to win by four. Now, here's the point, And yes, this story does have a point. When the final buzzer sounded and Randy Newman's I Love L.A. began to blast through those loudspeakers, I had all kinds of tingles and chills, maybe even a few tears. But you know what? It had nothing to do with spirituality. Listen, tingles, chills, and emotional experiences are not proof you're a true believer. Well, the next one then, you can serve in the church and give to the church, but that doesn't mean you're a Christian. I'll never forget one year I volunteered for vacation Bible school at the church my wife and I were attending. I think the Lord allowed me to do that just to show me I'm not gifted with kids. I was the worst. But listen, I love kids, but stick me in a room with 30 of them, and I'm praying for the Lord to take me home or take them home, whatever. But one day after an extremely tiring session, I heard a person say, well, I guess we're saved. I mean, who else would volunteer to do this, right? And I thought, I really hope that isn't what you're basing your assurance upon. Many people who aren't believers volunteer to help in sacrificial ways, but that doesn't make them Christians. The truth is our good works will never be good enough to earn heaven. Now, I could continue down this line of thinking for hours, but because of time, let's switch gears. We've seen some of the things that might cause a person to believe they're a Christian, but are no guarantee. Listen, unbelievers go to church, serve in church, give to the church, and get tingles and chills. They get what some could call religious feelings, and that's not a proof they're a believer. So if that isn't proof, let's dig into what is. Now, I looked up the definition of Christian in an online dictionary, and I found this. One who professes belief in the teachings of Christ. One who relates to Christian ethics and responsibilities. One who treats others in a kind and generous way. And now here's my favorite, the hero in Bunyan's Pilgrim's Progress. Now, there's nothing wrong with any of that, but it just doesn't go far enough, does it? It doesn't match up with what the Bible says a Christian is, and in the end, that's all that matters. 
The word for Christian in the New Testament is Christianos, and it's a compound word combining Christos, which is the title of Christ, which means anointed one, with the suffix meaning follower. In other words, then, a Christian is one who follows Jesus Christ. It seems Jesus would agree with that definition. John 10, 27, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. So the Christian is one who hears God's voice through his word and obeys it. Well, that's a bit weightier than what we accept today as being a Christian, isn't it? I mean, for some, just being American is the same as being Christian. You live in the Middle East, you're Muslim. Live in Japan, you're Buddhist. And if you live in America, you're a Christian. Christianity, then, is more about your nationality than following Christ. But fortunately, there are those who are standing up to this Christianity light that is sweeping through the church, apparently all over the world. I was just reading a very encouraging book titled Dreams and Visions, Is God Awakening the Muslim World? And I'll put a link down below if you're interested. I love to read and I'll share the links with you in those books that I think are valuable. Now, the author, Tom Doyle, wrote something I found interesting and heartbreaking. He said, many believers in the Middle East no longer use the term Christian because it means so little anymore. You don't need to be committed to Christ. You just need to show a slight interest in him and you're good. You're a Christian. So in a reaction to this deception, they no longer refer to themselves as Christians at all. They now call themselves what the term originally meant, Christ followers. It would probably help if we did the same thing here in America. In Kyle Eidelman's excellent book, Not a Fan, Becoming a Completely Committed Follower of Jesus, and this is a book I wish every believer would read. Again, the link is down below. He argues there is a vast difference between just being a fan of Jesus and being a follower of Jesus. In it, he says things such as, the biggest threat to the church today is fans who call themselves Christians but aren't actually interested in following Christ. They want to be close enough to Jesus to get all the benefits but not so close that it requires anything from them. Amen. I see that all the time in this new Christianity that requires nothing from those who claim to believe. In another chapter, he writes this. So in case someone left it out or forgot to mention it when they explained what it meant to be a Christian, let me be clear. There is no forgiveness without repentance. There is no salvation without surrender. And there is no believing without committing. Wow, those are strong words, aren't they? But you know what? They're sound words. They're accurate words. They're biblical words. So what is a Christian? They are those who have seen the reality of their guilt before God, that they have fallen short of what God requires to get into heaven. That's Romans 3, 23. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. They have seen the horrifying ramifications of that condition. Romans 6, 23. For the wages of sin is death. And that is that second death that John wrote about in the book of Revelation, that eternal separation from God in hell. And that has driven them to the only solution God has provided to clear that guilt off the books. They have trusted in Jesus Christ, finished work on their behalf. That's John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. But that belief is much more than a mental assent. It's not a, yeah, I believe that somebody named Jesus lived in Israel a few thousand years ago and died on the cross for sin. No, true belief contains a commitment to the one you believe in. Genuine saving faith is always a following faith. It trusts in the work of Christ on the cross for our sins, and it is willing to turn from those sins to follow him. Listen to how Peter put it in the second sermon ever preached in the early church. Acts 3.19 Repent then and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out, that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. So what is a Christian then? A Christian is one who has trusted in Jesus Christ for the salvation of their soul, and they are one who has turned from their sin to follow him. Well, I hope that helps. And listen, if you've watched this and come to the conclusion you have not truly believed in Christ, we can take care of that right now. Simply go to him asking him to forgive you, save you, and help you live for him. The promise is he will cast no one out who comes to him to be saved. 
Well, God bless you. Hit those subscription and like buttons down below. Also that notification button so you'll know when we put up new videos because you don't want to miss what's coming up. We're going to be doing a whole series on questions Christians ask and then a series on questions the world asks Christians. And I'm really looking forward to this. Well, God bless you and thank you for praying for us.